Welcome to Fostering Emergent Literacy. We will be discussing how to foster emergent literacy, which is the reading and writing behaviors that proceed and develop into conventional literacy. We will start this mini lecture with an anticipation guide. Pause the mini lecture and print off the lecture notes to complete the anticipation guide and to take any additional notes during the mini lecture. For each of the statements, put a check under agree or disagree to show how you feel. Be prepared to discuss your responses with classmates. Children begin developing literacy long before they enter school. Unless they are disabled, all school children have acquired a fairly extensive oral vocabulary and sophisticated syntactic system. Emergent literacy has roots in Reed's 1971 research into spelling. Reed was surprised to learn that young children being studied, who had no contact with each other, created spelling systems that were remarkably similar and that, although not correct, made sense phonetically. Reed concluded that we can no longer assume children must approach reading with no discernible prior conception of its structure. This research had an important implication. First and foremost, we must build on what children already know. But you may ask, what is emergent literacy? Shown on this slide are three definitions of emergent literacy. In summary, emergent literacy are the reading and writing behaviors of students that start before they enter school and continues until they are conventional readers and writers. On average, this is preschool through third grade. As stated previously, young children's introduction to written language begins before they come to school. Parents and other caregivers read to them and they learn to read signs and other environmental print in their community. Environmental print is print in the environment that is encountered in meaningful settings. Examples of such print are labels and signs of objects, signs, and functional print. Experiences with environmental print help children understand both the forms and functions of print, build a sight vocabulary, recognize letters and letter names, and develop knowledge of visual details. At first, young children will only be able to quote, unquote, read the word McDonald's if it is with the golden arches. If you were to write the word McDonald's on a piece of paper and show it to this young child, he or she would not be able to read the word. Through experiences in their homes and communities, young children learn that print carries meaning and that reading and writing are used for a variety of purposes. This is known as concepts of print. There are 10 basic concepts of print. They are, what we say can be written down and read, words, not pictures, are read, sentences are made up of words, in English, reading is from left to right and top to bottom, books are read front to back, words are made up of letters, spaces separate words, sentences begin with capital letters, sentences end with punctuation, and books have titles, authors, and illustrators. Regardless of where students are in terms of literacy, an essential first step in further development is to create an appealing environment that promotes active reading, writing, listening, and speaking. In an appealing environment, print is everywhere, and student stories and booklets are prominently displayed. Morrow recommends a variety of centers, which can include a classroom library or book corner. The key is to make reading and writing a natural part of the classroom activity. Since the key is to make reading and writing a natural part of the classroom activity, you should spend at least 20 minutes a day in reading aloud in all elementary grades. This time should be a regularly scheduled time. Many teachers do it right before lunch or right after recess. Emergent storybook reading, where the students read to themselves or a partner or you, should be about 10 minutes in length. Schedule it to follow your read aloud segment so that students can choose to read or retell a book that you have just read to them. Research has shown that those who are read to the most have the most developed language skills. It is key that you do not withhold read alouds as a punishment. They are too important a part of the curriculum. What are your favorite memories of literacy instruction and activities when you were in elementary or middle school? Gunning relates remembering being read Mr. Popper's Penguins in first grade. I myself remember my fourth grade teacher reading The Black Stallion to the class. Before you start reading aloud, set the stage. Grab the listener's attention with some type of teaser before holding up the book. 
hold up the book and point to the author's name and illustrator. As you read, stop to review and reflect on what has happened and predict what might happen next. If using a picture book, hold the book so everyone can see the illustrations. This takes practice. While most children's literature lends itself well to read-alouds, and even middle school students enjoy the occasional picture book read aloud at the start of a new unit, some undergraduates do not know what books might be good read-aloud books. Therefore, here are some predictable books that can be read aloud to the lower elementary grades and preschoolers. Some of the books are pictured along the right side of the screen. Here are some other high-quality picture books for read-aloud time recommended by Gunning. Again, some of the books are pictured on the screen. Two of these books are Caldecott Honor and Award-winning books, which are good books to have in your classroom library, no matter what elementary grade you teach. I would like to take a short side trip for a minute and talk about the Caldecott Newbery Award books. The Caldecott is an annual award for excellence in illustration. The Newbery is an annual award for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children, usually chapter books. There is only one winner each year, but both the Caldecott and Newbery Award honor status to two or three other books each year. I doubt Caldecott and Newbery would put it this way, but I view the honor books as the runners-up and just as good as the winner. Some of these books have been around and award winners or honor books since I was an elementary student. Make Way for Ducklings is just such a book. It is so popular, there is even a statue about the book in the city of the setting of the book. If you haven't already, I suggest getting a copy of the book and reading it. So, what are some highly effective activities that will help build emergent literacy? Some of the activities include reading to children, shared reading, reading by children, language experience and shared writing, independent writing, and other language building activities. Book reading is particularly effective for developing language when the books are carefully chosen and when there is interaction before, during, and after the book has been read. When reading to your students, ask a variety of questions including both lower and higher order questions. Help students make personal connections with the story by asking how the story made them feel or what they liked best. You can also ask them if they would like to hear a book similar to the one just read. Also, develop language and thinking skills. How much students gain from being read to depends on the quality of the book and the way it is read. Students show greater gains when the reading is interactive, when they are asked questions or are involved in discussing the story. So what are some things you can do to help make the read aloud interactive? There are before, during, and after strategies for both narrative and nonfiction text. We will discuss narrative stories first. Before reading the narrative text, but after your anticipatory set, show the cover of the book to the students. It is best that all students are as close as possible. Younger classrooms usually have a rocking chair for the teacher and a rug for the students to sit on. Discuss the author and illustrator. Have You Seen My Cat is written and illustrated by Eric Carle. Actually point to the name of the author so students can see his or her name. This helps students who have not actually grasped this concept of print. Eric Carle books are very popular in the first and second grade classrooms. Next, discuss the type of story. Is it make-believe? Is it realistic? Is it about animals? A person? Introduce the main characters. Finally, set a purpose for the children to listen to the story. All of this is done before you open the book and will only take a minute or two. Let me demonstrate as best as I can electronically. Class, I want everyone sitting crisscross applesauce spoons in the bowl. If you are unfamiliar with this phrase, it's Indian style with hands in your laps. Today I have a new book I am going to read to you. It's called To Market to Market. The author is Anne Miranda. The illustrator is Janet Stevens. Who remembers what the illustrator of a book does? That's right, Bobby. The illustrator creates the pictures. This is a story that is fiction, so it is not about a real person, but it is something that could happen to someone, so it is realistic. Looking at the background of the cover, what do you think a market is? That's right, Susie. A market is something like a grocery store, only at the market in this story, the lady is able to buy farm animals. 
While reading the narrative story aloud, encourage reaction and comment from the students. Elaborate on the text when appropriate. Ask occasional questions. Rephrase when it is apparent students are having difficulty with the words or phrases. Ask students to make predictions. Allow them to share their own interpretation of the story. You can even complete think alouds to show students how you think and figure things out while reading the text. Let's continue with the electronic example. To Market to Market by Anne Miranda. To Market to Market to Buy a Fat Pig. Home Again, Home Again, Jiggity Jig. Students, I notice that the words jig and pig rhyme. I think this book might be a rhyming book. Let's keep reading and find out if my prediction is correct. This was an example of a think aloud. To market, to bark it, to buy a red hen. Home again. Oh no, that pig left the pen. I think I was right. This is a rhyming book. First we had pig and jig. Now we have pen and hen. So far, the lady has bought a pig and a hen. What do you think she will buy next? Here you would pause for student guesses. Any guess is correct. Those are all good guesses, class. Let's keep reading and see what she does next. To market, to market, to buy a plump goose. Home again. What do you think will be happening at home? Oh no, the hen's on the loose. Those were all good guesses. It seems that when the lady gets home from the market with something new, the last animal is doing something that rhymes with the new animal. I will not read further on in this mini lecture. However, the book is very cute. You may want to check it out from your local library and read the rest of the story. After reading the narrative story, review the story components. Make connections between the story and the students' lives when possible. Engage students in an authentic follow-up activity. Let's continue with an electronic example. The End I like this story. Wasn't it interesting? My favorite part was all the rhymes. What was your favorite part? Of course, you would take student answers. If you start to get a lot of the same answers, say something like, Everyone really likes that part the best. Does anyone have a favorite part that is different? There are a lot of animals in this story. Who can tell me one of the animals? Keep going until you have all the animals. How did the story end? Again, take student answers. In our story today, the lady went to the market to buy things. When you go to the grocery store with your parents, what kind of things do you buy? Again, take student answers. Well, today we are going to and then tell students what they are going to be doing as a follow-up activity to the read aloud. This book does lend itself to all kinds of questions as the illustrations have all the previous animals in them doing something odd. For example, when you read about buying the goose with the hen on the loose, in the picture, the pig is sleeping on top of the kitchen cabinets. Reading aloud nonfiction books is also a good thing to do and allows students to learn about real things. Before reading an informational text, determine the level of understanding of a topic. Do this by discussing pictures, describe personal experiences with the topic, show artifacts, and even link it to a piece of fiction that you have read previously. For example, if you just read The Three Little Pigs and students are interested in wolves, you can read about real wolves in the next read aloud. When needed, provide demonstrations and explanations of difficult concepts. Discuss the relationships between the title of the book and the topic. Set a purpose for listening. Provide a link between their experiences and what they will be learning. These are not done in any particular order, but as needed with the chosen nonfiction book. Students' background knowledge on the topic plays an important role in how detailed you will need to be. Now let's have a simple electronic demonstration. Let's say you had just read Music Music for Everyone by Vera B. Williams yesterday and the students were really interested in learning more about music and especially the accordion which the main character plays. So this time you're going to read aloud selected pages from Eyewitness Books Music. You do not plan on reading the book cover to cover but rather pages 16 and 17 on bags of sound which include bagpipes and accordions. If you have an accordion or know someone who will let you borrow theirs, bring it to class so they can see a real accordion. 
The other instruments in the story, music, music for everyone, are drums, flute, and fiddle, also known as the violin. These instruments can also be brought in. Real artifacts that students can see and touch are always better than pictures. However, if you do not have these items, or if you are doing a topic like wolves, pictures or stuffed animals examples are the next best thing. Ask if any students play any of these instruments. If someone really does play the accordion, have him or her give a brief demonstration if they are willing. Say something like, Today we are going to be reading about real accordions, the instrument that our main character played in the book we read yesterday. Try to remember all you can about real accordions. While reading the nonfiction book aloud, ask open-ended questions to check for student understanding. Do this periodically through the reading. Help students identify pictures that might represent unfamiliar concepts. If the picture has a caption, read it aloud. Provide suggestions about activities or other books that will encourage students to further explore the topic. Excerpt from Bags of Sound Squeeze and Wheeze Floral bellows, a nickel-plated grate, and blue plastic fittings add to the splendor of the accordion. Pressing the keys and buttons emits air from the bellows to sets of free metal reeds. The accordion is supported by straps, leaving the hands free to operate the bellows and play the keys and buttons. After reading the text, allow students to ask questions. It is okay if you do not have all the answers. You can even allow students to research and try to find the answers themselves. Help students to see how nonfiction can be used to learn more about their own world. Offer activities that tie concepts to children's experiences.